Hey yo, what's going on with the viewers of the tube? Tyler here of Chico Crypto coming to you in the backyard for a candid video on this Thursday. And Bitcoin is very, very volatile right now before and even after the Fed's decision. We've been bouncing around basically 19.5K down to about 18.2K. Um, but we've bounced off of those levels uh, Monday and just here recently. Um, so support is holding. But for now, I don't think it's going to hold for too long. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Fed's decision. Um, it was a 75 BPS raise, which was pretty much expected. So initially, the market's, you know, pumped. But then the reality is that's a high freaking raise. Um, and the markets came down. So basically, the Fed has said they're looking to get interest rates in between um, 4.25 to 4. 4.5% by the end of the year. So that probably means another 75 BPS raise at their November meeting and then a 50 BPS at the end of the year in their December meeting. So in my opinion, I don't think we have hit the bottom. Um, but I think it is coming very, very soon. So I predicted months ago um, in a video based on previous cycles, um, halvings and all of that jazz, um, that Bitcoin would hit its bottom September 23rd and the price would be about 14500 Unless we get a massive dump, you know, here soon or tomorrow, uh, it doesn't look I'm going to be correct. Um, but I have a feeling over the next couple of weeks to a month, um, we will see the final shakeout. Um, of course, you know, I'm not going to be 100% right on the day, time, or the price of the bottom. But um, I think I'm going to be pretty close. Um, I, I have a feeling we haven't hit the bottom yet. There's multiple reasons, but the main three ones I have is altcoins. We still see crap altcoins pumping. Um, just before the Fed's decision, you know, a week and a half ago, a week ago, we saw Terra Luna Classic and Terra Luna pumping again. That does not happen at the bottom of a crypto cycle. I've been a part of, you know, a few of them. This is actually my third. Uh, 2013, 2014 was the first one. Of 2017, 2018 was my second one. And when we're at the bottom, no, altcoins are not pumping, especially crap altcoins. So right there, that just makes me go, okay, no. No way we are near the bottom if things like that are still happening. Um, in my opinion, that's basically whale holders of those altcoins making a fake pump. You know, they're using some of their capital to make a fake pump so they can get exit liquidity. Um, because Terra Luna Classic and uh, Terra Luna aren't going to be around in the next bull run. So they are looking to get exit liquidity out of a bunch of suckers, which they did because people started talking about it again and it was shilled across Twitter. But we are still seeing that with other altcoins to this day. So again, that makes me think we are not near the bottom. The second reason is Bitcoin miners, they haven't felt max pain. Um, they've barely actually felt any pain. They haven't been profitable probably for only like a couple weeks this cycle. Now, you guys, in the bottom of the market, the miners are feeling pain. They are feeling big time pain and they're not profitable for at least a few months. And, you know, we haven't seen them be um, we haven't seen them be unprofitable. I mean, like literally it's been a week or two. Um, hash rate has still been climbing. We haven't seen that extreme dip in hash rate like we do towards end of a cycle, um, the bottom of a cycle. So again, in my opinion, that just signals to me, miners haven't felt max pain. We are not near the Bitcoin bottom. And finally, um, it has a lot to do with um, the general public, um, we have a lot of YouTubers, Twitter accounts, 
personalities that are still freaking bullish. They'll go bearish for, you know, a day or two when we have a crash, but then they flip bullish, you know, right away when, once we start having, you know, even the slightest pump, they turn right back to bullish, you guys. That doesn't happen at the bottom of a bear cycle. Everyone turns bearish and no one thinks the markets are going to return. It takes, you know, a month of, you know, the market slowly moving up for people to start going, okay, I'm going to start making bullish videos again. Well, you guys, we have not seen that. Um, traders, YouTubers, Twitter accounts, they turn and flip bullish on, you know, a two three percent pump in the markets so we haven't seen traders you know feel max pain um we haven't seen influencers you know turn completely bearish um once we see youtubers consistently making bearish videos for about a month then in my opinion we might be near the bottom now i have been you know bearish for the past you know couple of months actually once i was like okay we are in a freaking bear market there's no doubt about that um but regarding this bottom you guys don't try and time the bottom you know don't try and listen to me oh tyler says it's gonna come you know september 23rd so that's when i'm gonna buy or you know he says in the next couple of weeks you know it's gonna hit probably hit the bottom that's when i'm gonna buy don't listen to me don't listen to jack trader over there listen to yourself um if you have a feeling that we are near the bottom then you should probably be dollar cost averaging dca you know buying on a consistent schedule every week every two weeks or as often as you can because if we are near the bottom you know drop dips down to 14k it's not going to be matter in the long run if you bought at 18k or 14k if bitcoin gets up to 100k beyond next bull cycle so again you guys do not try and time bottoms it's just a losing battle just dca um that's what i've been doing into you know bitcoin ethereum um but also a few altcoins now there's there's a lot of altcoin crap in the space. There's no doubt about that. There is still a ton of it. Um, but there are, you know, some absolutely fundamentally stellar projects out there. And one of those is having some big stuff coming actually next week. They have one of their biggest events, SmartCon, and that is Chainlink. So a lot of big players speaking at SmartCon, Sergey Brin, um, Microsoft, um, Swift is going to be there, the DTCC, a lot of big players. Um, but in my opinion, there's probably going to be some pretty big announcements. I have a feeling, of course, they're going to talk about staking, hopefully have a date for that or even the launch for it. But also, it looks like CCIP is going to be ready. Um, Synthetics, they created their... Um, teleporter using ccip technology and they said it should be ready for an initial version by the end of the year so we probably will be getting some information regarding ccip and staking at SmartCon. Um, another crypto i'm fully bullish on is gmx it's the best decentralized perpetual exchange out there um i really like it because there's no funky business that can go on by the team itself you know there's some outside funky business that can go on as we saw with avax but um it's not the exchange trading against its users like a lot of the centralized leverage exchanges bybit binance and beyond um another one um i don't want to give away too much information regarding this one because i do have video coming up on it but ewt um, they have the para relay chain coming down the pipeline and of course I have some big news that I'm probably going to be covering tomorrow regarding EWT um, and finally another one is Luxo so Luxo they do have their mainnet release coming soon it's one of the first Casper proof of stake chains and um, of course they do have an identity standard too which is ERC 725 the founder of Luxo Fabian Vogelsteller he created the ERC 20 contract you know the one of the one of the most important standards to Ethereum to this day and now he has ERC 725 but um Fabian Vogelsteller is one of the OGs of Ethereum, you know, 
And if you look at OGs of Ethereum, you know, who are there for the founding, help create criti critical components of it. Of course, you have Ethereum, number two market cap. You have Polkadot, I think, around number nine, ten market cap. You have Cardano, around number four or five market cap. And then you have Luxo, like number 400 market cap. In my opinion, it's undervalued because Fabian is a brilliant mind in the space. Well, viewers, again, be careful. I don't think the bottom is in. Um, but again, DCA, that's all you can do during these shitty, boring, bearish times. Cheers. I'll see you next time.